Hello and welcome to Meadow Afternoon. This is a place where I share writing behind the scenes and short stories inspired by slow living historical fiction and homemaking. The vine leaves are starting to change colour, turning from a vibrant green to a warm brown, and the wind that rustles through the garden is becoming cooler day by day. Today I have a new short story to share as I spend some time in the kitchen and do a little autumn baking. The cooler days are a perfect time to bake lots of cosy treats. Let's head into the kitchen and start the story. Afternoon Tea A short story by Ida Williams The kettle whistled cheerfully, sending out a constant stream of steam. Mrs. Prunella Trollope responded to the call and hurried over, pouring the boiling liquid into the teapot. The table looked particularly pretty that afternoon. Three cups and saucers set out on a lace tablecloth, a stack of dainty plates, a platter of ginger biscuits, and a small vase of wild flowers. Mrs. Trollope completed the assembly with the addition of an apple cake, freshly baked that morning. Afternoon tea was one of those necessary things that kept the village of Little Thatchbridge running on a harmonious basis. A quiet word over a cup of tea and sugary treat did the world of good for all involved. Disputes could be settled, feuds ended, and even marriages saved. Sitting in a sunny corner of her flat above the post office, it had become a negotiation zone over the years, and she had seen a little bit of everything. She often thought that the League of Nations would be far more successful with a permanent tea table at their disposal. Mrs Trollope made the final adjustment to the flowers and smoothed down the folds of her light blue patchworked skirt as the sounds of footsteps could be heard coming up the back stairs. That day, the tea was in aid of Farmer Heap. The weather-beaten man had turned up early that morning looking awfully downtrodden and with a tale of woe flapping at his heels. It all involved, he had explained at great length and in his characteristically short sentences, a large field behind the parsonage. The field was one that Farmer Heap had been given permission to cut and take away the long summer grasses at the end of the season. This worthwhile arrangement had been in place for many years. He had highlighted strongly and empathetically that morning that the grasses were to feed his sheep during the winter and without which he would be short. However, a calamity had befallen and due to an ongoing disagreement with the vicar, he had been prevented from cutting the grass this year. Farmer Heap was a proud man, full of ancient Saxon blood, and to go round begging the clergy was against his nature. Thus, he had taken the only sensible course of action and headed round to the post office. Mrs Trollope had listened sympathetically while sorting the mail and had promised to do what she could to help. Adjusting her little apron, she turned to greet her guests as the apartment door opened. Help she would. Afternoon, Delia. The vicar's wife stepped into the small flat, an oversized coat wrapped tightly around her. Prunella, dear, she puffed slightly. I would wager, not that I would ever engage in gambling, of course, but these stairs seem to have grown steeper since Christmas. Age must be catching up with me. Mrs Trollope smiled and took her coat. The only thing that had changed since the winter was the circumference of Delia herself. Each year it appeared to gradually increase, far outpacing the rather slow onset of old age. Indeed, that was quite far away for both women, neither having quite reached their 50th year. 
A sprightly set of steps brought Mrs. Jones into the room. She was much better acquainted with the advancement of years, being a good two decades older than the other two women, but apart from a head of grey hair, it seemed to bother her very little. You're looking well rested, Mrs. Jones, said Mrs. Trollope. Mrs. Jones was not one for first names, partly due to the unfortunate disadvantage of being christened Hydrangea by an overly romantic mother. Not many knew her first name, and those that did knew better than to use it. Mrs. Jones sunk into the chair and gave the tea table an approving nod. Hardly, I've been on my feet all day, not a moment to sit down. Your invitation this morning was very welcome. Not sure if I could have gone on much more. Well, ladies, I've had quite a day of it, I can tell you. Delia pulled off her gloves, one finger at a time. Mortimer has been practising all morning, pacing back and forth. I will need to buy a new carpet for his study before long, it's so worn out. Mrs Jones shook her head. I hope the sermon this week is good and long. It does the young folks good to sit still. Whilst her guests discussed the upcoming church service, Mrs Trollope poured the tea and considered her battle plan. These matters had to be approached carefully. The still waters of the village could become choppy within minutes if one did not have the utmost tact. The best way was usually a roundabout advance. Tell me, Delia, how are your preparations for the bishop's visit coming? Mrs Trollope offered round the plate of ginger biscuits. Quite well, I think. Mortimer is fussing as usual, but the house is ready. I've bought a new set of linens for the guest bedroom just for the occasion, and all the woodwork has been polished. The parsonage has so much woodwork, you know. The other two women nodded empathetically. 15th century oak wood panelling, while beautiful and no doubt historic, was a headache to any housewife's cleaning schedule. Mortimer does help a little, but he's so busy all the time, especially with the visit next week. The bishop is a great reader of Dickens. She looked seriously at her friends and sighed. Mortimer has been re-reading Copperfield. It's not that I dislike Dickens, but I can't handle an examination of Copperfield's lack of character judgement during window washing. Best let him get on with it, returned Mrs Jones, munching noisily on her second ginger biscuit. Delia nodded. I have been. Mrs Trollope then saw her way in. What about the garden? That's a big job for you on your own. Luckily, it's still looking nice. The last roses have started blooming. And the grass? Mortimer trimmed it not too long ago. That's good. Mrs Trollope stirred her tea thoughtfully. The field as well. Delia blinked as a slow, horrified look filled her blue eyes. No. I had completely forgotten about the field. It's so tall at the moment. I thought I had everything ready. She looked so distressed that Mrs Trollope instantly regretted the angle of her advance, but there was no way back now. Delia, you must have the field cut. What if the bishop wants to take a stroll or play some cricket? Mrs Jones leaned forward. He does like a game of cricket. It's vital, in my opinion. Mrs Jones looked sidewards at Mrs Trollope and winked. While Mrs Trollope may have often acted as a diplomat within the inner workings of Little Thatchbridge, Mrs Jones was without a doubt the chief spy. No piece of news was ever new to her. It would spoil his visit for sure, continued the older woman. Just think of how disappointed he'll be to look out of his bedroom window onto that jungle. Oh dear, Delia set down her teacup. Mrs Trollope decided it was time to bring the conversation to a close, sensing, rightly, 
that Mrs. Jones was beginning to enjoy herself a little too much. I have a suggestion, she swooped in swiftly. Why not let Farmer Heap cut it all as he did before? With his two sons, it will be a quick task. Mrs. Jones clapped her hands together, butting in with a slow and dramatic emphasis. Now, that is an excellent idea. How did you think of that, Prunella? Mrs. Trollope ignored the comment and looked towards the vicar's wife. I don't think Mortimer would like that. Mr. Heap and him don't get on, not since the incident. I understand, replied Mrs. Trollope. In this case, though, he must put aside these differences. After all, it's for the bishop. For the bishop, echoed Mrs. Jones, taking another slice of cake. For the bishop. Delia then smiled. Yes, he wouldn't mind in this case. The bishop's visit is much more important. Mrs. Trollope poured her a second cup of tea and felt quite satisfied. Everyone would be happy. The business over the elderberry wine is ridiculous in any case. Mrs. Jones yawned and pulled her shawl over her bony shoulders. Very silly if you ask me, grown men acting like children. Delia frowned. She was never a disloyal wife. Now, I don't think so. Mr. Heap knew perfectly well that those bottles were set aside for the needy. Maybe he felt needy himself, Mrs. Jones chuckled. After Christmas dinner, we all do. Anyway, he says he never touched them. This is not funny. Four bottles went missing. They didn't grow legs and go walking. Of course he took them. Leaning back in her chair, Mrs. Trollope took a long gulp of tea. If only she could patch up the elderberry wine issue, that would solve next year's haymaking problem ahead of time. The bishop could hardly be called upon to visit twice in a row, especially to facilitate the cutting of a singular field of grass. Sensing yet another feud forming, she pushed her chair back from the table with a sudden thud. The two women looked up startled. Ladies, Mrs Trollope picked up the teapot. Let's have another cup of tea. The End I hope you enjoyed the story today. This is the second story featuring Mrs Trollope and the residents of Little Thatchbridge. I will leave a link to the playlist down below if you would like to hear more about the goings on in the village. Please consider subscribing to stay up to date with new videos. Until next time.